everything makes complete sense here that doesn't make it comforting. That's different. That's notably different. Please hit the like and subscribe. I don't post every day. And there's a reason for that because, uh, you know, the algorithm doesn't work for Jay's Corner because YouTube wants to give information in silos. The issue is life's not that simple. Right? There are multiple silos. They clash. They interact. And I'm going to state that the reason that we have our client base in the way that we do is because I've tried to make sure that they understand that. Good morning, everybody. April 18th. Welcome to Jay's Corner. It's a markets update. And the reason I hadn't commented very much during the first quarter is because to me, that was just simply too good to be true. But I just stayed silent because by that same token, fear of missing out is a real thing. Well, the worm has turned and the way it has turned for newcomers is this top line, which is the 10 year note, 10 year interest rates for US government treasuries has increased notably. This used to be 4.18, 4.15, 4.2, now screamed higher by 0.4, a notable move in this world, 10% higher. And basically, the reason that it's important for newcomers is that it changes the denominator. As a result, if you just change the denominator and you can just write, it doesn't have to write 25 time periods, just write one or two, you will see that the calculation of NPV is notably different. When you couple that with the idea that there's huge amounts of error on, on the numerator C1, C2, that what you have is tremendous amounts of moving around, and that's exactly what you got. I can tell you intraday that it's as complicated as I could see. We have seen basically 0.4, move in the markets in both directions within an hour, multiple times in a day. This makes it almost impossible for a private person to pick. So I don't give financial advice here. I will give you some practical advice about how to look at this and then how to consider it in your financial, you know, as you're assessing your financial standing. It's important to understand this. And actually, you want the up and down. You want volatility. And the reason is, because then and only then can you measure what is going on with your holdings. It's very important because the reality is when this diagram here is boring, right? In other words, this is what happens, right? You can see that. And what I did here is I changed the shape. I finally figured it out. So you change the shape of this blue where the outcomes just doesn't range very much. Right. There's going to be up and down and you're going to have little reports about this and that. But the reality is that the market doesn't move too much. Well, when the 10 year note has moved around, what has happened is this is flattened, widened. So you can see now this blue curve is now flatter and wider, meaning that the outcomes are going to be swinging around as people are adjusting to the fact that this is our world now and probably not to change for a bit, as opposed to this. So as I said, more complicated, not less complicated than you, than you might think. Okay, let's continue. So, uh, you know, it's what's pretty cool is it snaps to back to its original. So what we've had here, as most people know, is we've had all sorts of headlines about artificial intelligence and a uh, should be obvious that while AI may not run the world, the people who understand and adopt AI will run the world. So let's just, and that there's your you know career guidance, if you will. If I were twenty, if I were telling a twenty-seven year old, you better be on board. Anyway, let's go to Nvidia here because of course most eyes in this past year have been on NVIDIA. And what I wanted to point out here is this chart. NVIDIA is the blue line. 
And the S&P 500 as a whole, the stock market as a whole is this green line here. And you can see what I did is I used the five day period. So it looks not big, right? But this is half, half the first three months meaning that you know, if you call the market up 7% by the S&P 500 alone, I didn't say consolidated portfolios, but alone, stocks alone up 7%, now down by 3.5%, explaining a lot of the five last five business week. You can see that NVIDIA down by a whopping 7%. So if you had 14 before, you now have 13 now, the issue here is this is also not telling you the full story because what ends up happening is you'll see here that the reality is over the month, it used to be plus 0.81 per 8.1% and now swung down to minus 4.3%. That is a move here of 12.4% from high to low. And that's the volatility there meaning that on top, on top of what we have here, which is the interest rate market this volatile, and in addition to that, as I've stated in other videos, please watch them, by the way, like, subscribe. I'm terrible at asking for like and subscribe, but you can see here foreign exchange has now moved also, which is that, for example, the Euro recovered slightly but you've been talking about 1.08, 1.08, 1.085. Those look like small moves to the everyday person. I promise you they're not. In other words, one of your other takeaways here is if I had to say in general, that the non-financial world has no idea about how tight, how closely People are squinting at every tick out to, the, like, for example, a big figure number, and they'll call this the big figure, 1.07 to 1.08. They'll use, okay, we've changed big figures. Even before that, they're looking at many more digits smaller than that, much smaller than that. For example, in the bond market, if you've outperformed by 0.003, compared to a benchmark, compared to your competitors, you're a hero in the fixed income market, a hero. And I'm not exaggerating. To that degree, it's specific. So you can see what I mean from 4.18 to 4.59 is an enormous move, enormous, with speed. And it's important that I point out the speed right? Because the issue here is, if you look back here, is that our going up and down here makes it very, very challenging because as a result, NPV, which is the price of risky assets, of all assets actually, you know, your estimates are swinging around in a more volatile fashion. That makes perfect sense. It makes absolute sense here that if the denominator moves and foreign exchange moving, which are much, much bigger than the equity market, not close, not close, that you would have equities being swung around as the flea on the tail of a dog. That makes complete sense. That's why I'm explaining in this framework, right? Which is that now what would you would have? Of course. This should make complete logical sense, right? In other words, well, the denominator has changed. It's more volatile. The, that blue curve has now also flattened out a lot. I don't think that it's necessarily going to end very quickly, meaning I, without choosing absolute direction, do I think that we are going to continue to be wider and flatter? I think that that is clear because of all of the other extra noise that we have. The war in the Middle East has made it more complicated, meaning that this curve on in the lower left, that blue curve being even flatter. So now you can see it. The inputs here 
all pointing towards flatter, flatter, flatter distributions, meaning that more up and down in more violent fashion, I guess I shouldn't use the more erratic fashion, violent is probably the wrong thing um, in the age of armed conflict, but more erratically, you would expect it to swing up and down. It's important to then also set your expectations accordingly. You can see here. So this is BlackRock. And the reason I use BlackRock is because, as always on Jay's Corner, right? I'm not going to ask uh, Joe Average about, you know, their opinion about anything. Instead, let's just go to the head of the class, right? BlackRock, largest money manager, and by money manager, I mean asset allocator on the planet. And you can see it here, that on their diversified portfolio, for someone who's, and this sits in many, many 401ks, for example, right? Which is that, and to 2030 here means that targeting at a person who is turning 65 in that year, all right, so 65 minus, let's call it six, a 60-year-old. Year to date, zero, 0.06%, basically unchanged. If we back it up, meaning of being 65 in 2040, 1.45%. Basically, what you've seen is you've seen a bunch of headlines here to say, hey, the world is great. My comment to people has been, this has been largely a year where people have tried to keep pace by headlines and yet also knowing that this is that the reality is now is probably a more fair assessment, more fair pricing of where the world currently stands. It's important that you not take my words as financial advice, it's also important that you not take my words as prediction, right? Which is my only prediction here is that the blue curve is flatter, flatter, meaning that we should be prepared for higher, up, more extreme up and down for longer. For now, don't get me wrong. You know, you could have immediate peace. You could have all sorts of resolutions. You could have interest rates back down to 4.1. And I would change my mind immediately. Remember here, this is a financial markets. These are not in isolation. The underlying facts change rapidly. Rapidly. Like I said, we've gone from 4.18 to 4.58 in less than two weeks. Two weeks. Two and a half weeks. Right. In other words, quickly. And as a result, yes. Then, yes. More up and down here. So that everything makes complete sense here. That doesn't make it comforting. That's different. That's notably different. And, and what I was saying is on the last video, I said, you know, let's not, we don't be complacent. That's what I intended to send at the middle of March when the headline screen, well, stocks are going to keep screaming higher and all-time highs and this, that, and the other. That's what you saw. I'm like, hey, you know, these year-to-dates are not anywhere near as enthusiastic as, you know, what you would see in the media because their, their agenda is to get eyeballs. Very important here that you set expectations correctly. And the reason that is important is of course to Mr. X. So to follower to newcomers here, for example, and let's uh, you know correct this, right? Which is now this is Mr. X, and so now you can see my point, which is you see year to date in a world where the headlines have seemingly screamed, "Hey, the world is a great place. The world is a great place," but the reality is top of class. Find it complicated. This is not, like I said, if there's a single party, a single few parties who would have their finger on the pulse of the playing field, this is it. They're on the playing field. Absolutely. Now, that doesn't mean that every manager of every fund is on the playing field. 
that that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, can they get the information? The number of calls you would have to make is basically infinite and still not get actual the actual news of what's going on on those blinking numbers. These guys call, they get the answer, they get the truth in moments. That's just, you know, and I'm not splitting atoms here. That makes common sense, right? The most important client of Wall Street basically calls asking for an information. The you know service providers to them answer, and they answer quickly. My point is, after that little tangent, is that you can see that, in fact, it's been more difficult the entire time. It's good at Mr. X. The reason that this is important is, as you can see here, and, you know, without being specific, too overly specific, right? I understand that people want simplicity. I do. I get it. Jay's Corner is about trying to explain something that's very complicated, more actually more complicated than it's being pre presented to you, and getting it just so that you're not cutting meat off the bone. And, but the weaknesses show up. They don't show up when, you know, this, this graph looks like, you know, they're right after the fact, uh, A, after the fact. When? When this happens. But the weakness shows up when this starts happening. And that's where we are now. And that's what we've got now. Right? I don't think there's any doubt about that. That's what we've got right now. Now, why does that matter? It matters for a couple of reasons because what, you know, I'm, I, I sit there in shock horror, to be candid with you, that you would have this idea of any portfolio return presumed to be some constant rate. Right? You cannot just presume oh, well, we're just going to go up by X percent. And I've used 7% simply because I've seen a video that says simple portfolio that everyone can use. Things like that, right? And what ends up happening is they end up presuming something like this. Okay, that means in two years you're at 114.49. What really happened, right? For example, you could have said the same thing in 2022, and what ended up happening is you went down to 80. Okay? So just think to yourself, in order to go and be back on track, assuming you didn't have to use, assuming you didn't have to use any money, assuming that you didn't, you went under into a cave and ignored everything and then came out two years later, what would have had to happen during that second year? What would have required to be happen is this divided by this, 43%. In a year, that's what you would have needed in order to snap back from 80 to, which is crazy, and that's almost what you got. The issue with that, of course, is now here, right? And I'm going to show it to you in a moment. Yes. What if you were wrong? The pregnant pause there is that it is an assumption and it's a big one, which says, oh, we're just going to cruise along here at 7% every year as if it's like kind of a straight line. And therefore, you just run this portfolio, whatever it would be. And I'm not even going to show you what a model portfolio that they that I've seen on videos which is just gross to me, to be candid with you. It's, it's oversimplifying to such a degree that it's not practically useful. Because if you told a person that they had 100 in retirement savings and then they had 80, in this period here, after what I've said, you could have still marched down from 80. Nothing guaranteed here that you were going to go to 114 ultimately. No. There was entirely risk there, and that's why I'm having these graphics. You're still at the red arrow every moment. 
you're at the red arrow. There is nothing to stop you from going from 80 to 70 to 60, right? Because otherwise, for example, you don't ever get from 100 to 100 to 80. And this is the flaw of the set of financial information that people are provided. This is why YouTube large, you know, has these flaws, which is with, is that they want to give you a 10 minute video. I understand that to make it simple. But if you just start peeling layers off the onion, you can see the logic for everyday people and just using your common sense. I'm committed to that, which is, I do believe that people can understand. But what ends up happening is people are in such unsure footing about the theory, about understanding these ideas, that what ends up happening, it's easy to listen to narratives on the news and presume that it's, that it's true. When, they don't, when the conclusions don't apply to you. And this is where the public, the audience gets hurt. And you can see this is entirely, I, I cut off the age intent entirely, right? If, if you're 28, that, that, that is entirely different, right? As I said in the last video, right? I want it low. <laughs> I'm 28 years old. You make gobs of money. You've got this future where you've got, you know, a six digit income that is, you know, assured, meaning that you're a very highly qualified person, for example, and on track as of today, right? Meaning that you've adopted AI into your thinking. But anyway, my point here is that you know, you want 80 and you want to 80 fast. Why? Because when you're making the most money, A, you want to add to the 80. Absolutely. You want to you put money of your own in here at 85, right? You want to increase your contributions. Why? You're 29. You're 69, whoa, 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 whoa. That is different, right, entirely. And you can see it here, right? Yeah, you went down to 80. What happens if this was 60? Now to get back on track, you had to go from 60 up to 122 the next year, more than double. Double in a context where this kind of thing, when the market has, the headlines have said, market on fire, market on fire, all time high, bang, this is what you got. This went from plus three and a half to down by this in three weeks. Last point for today, which is, as you can see, all the attention all the attention comes up here, all of it, right? I mean, I, I understand it. You know, they have bills to pay. They want eyeballs. And it's easiest to understand exciting stories about Netflix. Everyone knows what Netflix is. Almost nobody understands what the bond market is, right? So as a result, the idea, people, if you had bond market, if we had Bondolero hour, you know, nobody would watch it, candidly. Even though it's run by its size, is, you know, dwarfs the stock market. Uh, something that Jay's Corner readers, subscribers know. My issue here is that you can see that the wrong takeaways are everywhere. And I'm trying to, you know, my alarm is set to tell me that it's time to stop talking. <laughs> so you know the video is almost over. So my point here is that you can say, okay, don't worry about it. We're going to return back to, to average. But again here, what's the weakness is that the, I'm going to erase this, this stuff, uh, these little T's here. No one said when. Right. In other words, if this thing were time and all of a sudden, yeah, OK, sure. If you went like this and like this in short order, yeah, then you don't do anything because it's going to return back. But what you've had 
in fact, was this. And now what we can have is a longer period of time. And when that happens, what you've got is, okay, yeah. What happens if it doesn't return to 100 until out here? Which is all, you know, certainly is possible. Right? Meaning that without any predictive power, meaning that when you understand that it's that the outcome can be random, you then also understand that this isn't also a possible scenario. Except what? Except you've had to withdraw in order to pay for stuff. Right? Cheerios. This is what the, you know, what I like to say, right? Cheerios. Which are now not a are now seven dollars and increasing at three percent currently so now you've got something that's seven dollars in the next year cost seven dollars 21 cents and then 721 times 1.03 from there meaning that your withdrawals from here have to start increasing as a result of inflation your takeaway here and you'll find this surprising which is that Now's the time to actually look at your balances. And the reason is you're trying to assess how sensitive your holdings are. It's an important last point, which is I started by saying that the media and the information that you get is to say, okay, buy and hold forever. Stocks in the long run, that's fine. But the practical reality is that you're also withdrawing if you are retired. It also can represent opportunity. You're 28, right? You're 28 and it's dropped from 100 to 80. Like I said, this is the kind of thing you actually want. And the reason because of time. And because of that, that's the reason you should check. Because what we can't have, we meaning that, you know, people here in comprehensive financial planning and also, you know, people in the stable, right? We can't have this scenario where we're down to 80. We just can't. Why? Because there's nothing to assure that we were going to go back to 100 immediately. And during this period, if you had to withdraw, now let's say you are at 75 and the market went up by 20%. You can see it here. 75 times 1.2 is not 100 at all. Right? So you had, it went down to 80. You needed to get some money in order to pay for more expensive Cheerios. And now the rest went up by the market as a whole, just say 100% stocks. Well, even then, if you went up by 20% the next year, you're still not where you were on day one. You can see it. And this is sequence risk star because of the fact that when you are liquidating savings in order to pay for stuff, then you need to be extra careful. Not just the singular takeaway of it'll all work out stocks in the long run. If that's out here and you're now 80, you've given up comfort and you've had to suffer through stress during the time that you were trying to enjoy retirement, whether or not you were trying to go on field, you know, on vacation or a cruise. Right? Why? Because you've just let this narrative of stocks in the long run and then adjust your spending for it. For me, I would probably be more aware of the risk you're actually running so that you can then spend comfortably, more comfortably on the things for expenses. And that then includes trips, moving house, whatever it would be, however you want to spend your retirement. Okay. Half an hour at breakneck pace here. I've only got about seven more hours of comments, but let's stop it here for another day. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe. I don't post every day. And there's a reason for that because 
uh, you know, the algorithm doesn't work for Jay's Corner because YouTube wants to give information in silos. The issue is life's not that simple. Right? There are multiple silos. They clash. They interact. And I'm going to state that the reason that we have our client base in the way that we do is because I've tried to make sure that they understand that and that we are trying to make these different silos fit together, work together in order to preserve your household net worth so that you can get on with the personal private priorities that you have. 